Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm and this is video 4 in the computer programming series. By now, we've installed the SDK, we've installed the IDE, and we've actually written our first program. Um, we've learned how to write instructions to the console window and how to put text on our screen. We even learned how to change the console colors. Now we're going to learn how to actually do some cool stuff with it and give our user the ability to accept some, you know, to type in what they want and change the program. Because programs aren't really that great if the user can't tell it to do stuff, right? All right, so let's make a new application. Uh, make sure it's a console application. Make sure you change the name. I'm going to type, I'm going to create, uh, let's see, I want to name it variables uh, teacher edition. Okay, and make sure you save it in a specific spot. For me, I'm, all my stuff is going into computer programming here. And click OK. Alrighty, so now we have a brand new application that we can go ahead and start programming in. So let's talk about a new concept called variables. Variables are, uh, variables is a word you probably have heard before, uh, especially in math class or, or whatnot, and variables allow us to basically save some data. So the way a variable works is, uh, let's talk about it uh, in context in math, right? If you're taking an algebra class, a variable might be x. x would be a variable. And x might equal, I don't know, something. And you've got to solve for x. You've got to figure out what x equals, right? Or you can know what x means, and x equals 5, right? Or x could be 8, or x could be 368, or whatever you want it to be, right? x could be any number you want x to be. Uh, and in algebra, your goal is to solve for x, or solve for f, or solve for i, or whatever the variable is. In programming, it's essentially the same thing. We can create variables that we can give the variable a name, and we can put data inside of those variables. And better yet, we can actually allow our user to put data inside of those variables. And there are a lot of data types that we can use. We can use a string. Now, strings uh, are uh, what we were using in the last video when we were writing actual words onto the screen. A string is essentially just a word, right? A string, let's say if you want to write someone's name. So a string could be someone's name, John, for example. Now, the string is actually John. The string is John. J-O-H-N, and, and specifically a capital J-O-H-N. Everything between these quotes is the string, right? Now this right here, this name, this is the actual name of the variable. This name can be anything I want. It could be name, it could be first name, it could be, uh, you know, boogers, whatever I want to write, right? I can name my variables anything I want, but it's important that we remember the name of the variable because we need to be able to use it later. So here we've created a place uh, where we can store a string and we've called that place name. <clears throat> Think about variables like buckets, right? So we've created a new bucket that only holds strings. And that bucket, we've put a piece of duct tape on the outside of that bucket and we wrote name on it. And so this bucket's name is name. And inside that bucket, we've dumped a new string called John. All right, what other data types do we want to use? Well, let's say we want to use an individual character instead of an entire string of characters. Let's say we want to use an individual character. Well, we can use a data type called char. And let's say we'll name this char gender, and we'll say John is a male. And actually, it's yelling at me. Why is it mad at me? Well, the reason why is because if I use these quotes, then this program automatically assumes I'm creating a string. But I've already told it here that I want to create a char. So we don't want quotes. What we want are single quotes. Single quotes. There we go. And now it matches up with char. So double quotes for a string of characters, single quotes for a single 
character. Let's talk about numbers. Now, there are two different data types and numbers that I'm going to teach you. There are plenty more, but there's only two that we're really going to use. One is an integer, and one is a floating point number, right? Integers are whole numbers, numbers that do not have decimal points at all. And the key word for integer data types is int, so I-N-T. I'm going to call this age because your age is a specific number. It can't be a decimal point. You're not 32.6 years old. You're 32. And so let's say John is 32. Now notice I didn't use any quotes there, any singles or doubles, because with numbers you don't want quotes. If I put quotes around it, it would turn this into a string. And it would get mad at me because it's not supposed to be a string. But strings can be numbers also. But just remember, if we use a string, we can't actually do any math with that number. It's just a string of characters. We don't know how to do math with the string of characters. Well, we kind of do, and I'll show you that later. But we can't actually add 32 to something in order to make it a new number. So if we're doing additions or mathematics operations, we want to use integers. Or we can use what's called a float float or a floating point number. Floats are essentially just numbers with decimals or numbers that can have decimals in them. They don't necessarily have to have a decimal. But they just have the ability to have a decimal. So let's think about numbers that have decimals. Um, let's do GPA. Let's say John is in college and he wants to store his GPA in, a, in some data. So let's say GPA and let's say his GPA is 3.6. John's doing pretty pretty well, right? Now, I can put a semicolon here, but, well, wait a second. It's mad at me. Well, let's figure out why. If we hover over, it'll tell me something. Literal of type double cannot be implicitly converted into type float. Use an F suffix to create a literal of this type. Okay, so what this is saying, if we kind of go through all that complicated jargon... What this is really saying is, what I've written is called a double. A double is another kind of floating point number, but it's not used that often. If we create a float, we actually have to write type F at the end of our number in order for it to understand that it's a float, right? So we've written our number and we put an F there. And so now everything's good. But wait a minute, you might be thinking, oh, what's with the green squiggly lines here? Well, the green squigglies under these under the variable names just tells me that there's not a problem with my application. It'll actually run. There's nothing. It's not doing anything yet. But what it's doing is it's saying, hey, you haven't actually used these variables anywhere. Basically, what we've done is we've created some space in our data or in our uh, uh, computer. We've said, hey, here's some memory that I want to you know, carve off and set aside for this name variable and for this gender variable and for this age and this GPA variables. I want to carve off some space in our memory for that, but we haven't actually used it, which means we're carving off space in memory and just putting stuff in there, but we're not actually doing anything with them yet. So it's an inefficient use of our program. So we're going to actually fix that. We're going to use these variables later. All right, so let's actually get into using these variables. First of all, I want to ask my user what their name is, because not every user that uses this application is going to be named John, right? So let's actually uh, ask the user their name and let them type it in. Okay, so down here I'm going to actually create a statement that's going to ask my user what their name is. This is easy. You've already done this before console dot write. Now, here's where we're going to want to use something new. Instead of a right line, we're going to want to use a right. Now, the difference between these is that with a right line, our cursor actually goes to the next line underneath of it. Once it writes our stuff, the cursor goes down to the next line. With a right, instead of a right line, with a right, the cursor stays next to the text we've written. And so we're going to want to actually use a write for this, and you'll see why in just a second. What is your name? Now notice what I've done here. I wrote out the words I want. I put a colon and then a space. This means this is indicating to my user that they want I want you to put your name right next to these words, and I put a space so that it's not smushed together when they start typing. So what is your name? 
and down here I'm going to give them the ability to, to type it in. Now they can already type what they want and hit enter. The problem is it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to be stored anywhere. I want to tell my application to store whatever they type into the name variable, basically replacing John with whatever name the my user types. So I'm going to type name equals, basically my variable is going to equal whatever they type in here. And how do we capture what they've typed? Well, we can use a read statement. So I'm going to say console.readLine. Okay. So now when they type that information, it's going to get stored into the name variable. Well, let's actually use the name variable. Let's say console.writeLine. And instead of actually telling it what to write, I'm going to say write whatever is in the name variable, write that onto the screen. And I'm going to make it wait, console.readLine so that it waits for me. Let's see if this actually works. Essentially what the program should do is it should tell me to write my name, it should give me the option to write it, I should type out my name, and then hit enter, and then it will actually write my name below the line because whatever I type here is gonna be stored into the name variable, and then we're gonna dump that out onto our screen in a console write line statement. So let's give it a try, let's see what happens. All right, and it's building, it's building, it's building, and here we go. All right, so it says, what is your name? Now notice, because I use the right statement, it's actually, my cursor's on the side here, which is what I want. My name is David. So I hit enter, and it actually printed my name onto the screen, which is fantastic. And I can write whatever I want there, and it'll print right there on my screen. Perfect, so our application's working the way we want it to. We're actually gonna get rid of this statement, because we wanna do more. All right, let's use all these variables. Let's say I want my user to input their gender. So console, and you know, instead of typing all this out, I'm actually gonna just copy and paste. Copy, and it's gonna take a bit. All right, there we go, and paste. And instead of what is your name, what is your gender? And actually here I wanna give them some instructions, so I'm gonna say M, or F, oh, or F, male or female. Now, uh, I know there's more than two genders or whatever, but uh, we'll just give them these options. All right, and then instead of storing that in the name variable, I actually want to store that in the, ch oh no, not char. <laughs> I want to store that in the gen gender variable. Okay, perfect. Console.readLine, uh-oh. Now we have a problem. The problem is this console.readLine statement turns whatever they've typed into a string. And now, hmm, I want to put a char in there. So what we need to do is we actually need to tell it that we're trying to put in a character instead of a string. So we need to do a couple things. One, instead of read line, we're gonna say read key so that it reads the one keystroke that we wanna give it. And we're gonna say at the end here, dot key char, basically saying we're gonna turn that key into a char variable. And then it's gonna get put in a gender. All right, perfect. Next, we want age. So again, we can paste console.writeLine. How old are you? Let's say, how old are you? Yeah. And then instead of name, I want it to go into my age variable. Okay, oh, and it's mad again. Let's figure out why. All right, well, it says, I can't implicitly convert a string into an int. Okay, great. Remember that this read line here turns whatever they've typed into a string. And that's not what I want. I want it to actually be an integer variable. And so I've got to figure out how to change it into an integer. Okay, well, so this isn't gonna work. This statement's not gonna work. What I need to do is I need to create, I, I need to parse something. So I wanna parse, parsing means converting from one data type to another. So I'm going to int, because I wanna parse this as an int, int try parse, 
basically try to parse this number into an integer. And the number I want to parse is console.readLine. And I want it to put it into the age variable, so out age. Now look, that's kind of complicated, but if you type out what I've, what I've written, you'll see that this is a parse statement that you can use for everything, right? This is what you want to parse, and this is where you want it to go when it's done parsing it. Perfect. All right, now let's do GPA. And again, we probably have the same issue, but instead of an int, we want to try a parse for float. So here, uh, what is your GPA? And instead of a name equals, we are going to create this next, we're going to do the same statement here. Copy, paste, and instead of an int, we actually want it to be a float. Because if you remember, our GPA variable oop, is a float. So we're going to float dot try parse, and instead of it going to the age variable, we're going to go to GPA. Okay, perfect. So now our user can enter three pieces of information about themselves. And down here at the bottom, output record. We want to output all of this information to the screen so that our user can see the information they've typed. So console.write line. Welcome. Now, I want to put their name on here, but I don't know what their name is, so I can actually add the name variable to the end of my string. So I can hit plus name. Now notice that I didn't put that inside the quotes. If I put the quotes over here instead of here, it would assume it wants me to type welcome comma space plus name plus space name. It'll actually put those words on the screen, which is not what I want. All right, so there's their name right line. Now we want to do U R A or U R let's do age. Age. Oh no, U R A. Let's do because we can do two statements in one. U R A. Age. Oh, I forgot the plus. Do not forget the plus. The plus says to add these variables to the string. So age plus uh, year old plus gender. So you are a 32 year old man or whatever your gender is. And then console dot write line your GPA is space plus GPA. Okay, now at this point, my application should work. I have a user that can enter in all this information about themselves, and when they hit enter, it actually outputs their entire record. Here, I'm actually going to uh, clear my screen. So console.clear so that it doesn't get complicated or it's not jumbled up. So I'm gonna hit start and let's see what happens. So it says, what is your name? My name is David. What is your gender? I'm a male. Oh, I need to actually put some breaks in there. How old are you? 32. What is your GPA? Uh, 1.2, I'm not doing so well. Hit enter. So welcome, David. You are a 32 year old. Mm -hmm. Your GPA is 1.2. So my application works, and I can run it as many times as I want to make it actually work. Let's fix that little problem with the gender. Let's do, uh, here's an easy way to fix it, console, console dot write line. If we do a write line, but we don't actually tell it what to write, it'll just hit enter, essentially. Let's try it again, let's put in some new variables. So what is your name? Uh, Jessica. What is your gender? Female. Oh, and I hit enter quickly instead of doing what I was supposed to do. Uh, J Jessica is zero, age, zero years old, but she has a 3.9 GPA. So Jessica, your zero year old F, your GPA is 
So now at this point, we can actually make whatever we want, right? We could take these skills, ask our user some very basic questions and spit out their answers in a new context. So, so at this point, we can read our users input and store them in variables. And as long as we remember what the name of our variable is, we don't have to know what your user's GPA is. We just say whatever they type, we're going to store it into the GPA variable, and then we're going to spit it out on the screen with this. All right. Now, uh, I know this video is maybe a little bit complicated. You might have gotten lost a couple times. Go back and watch the video until you figure it out. Practice along with me. Type out what I'm typing. Um, because this next project, you're going to actually be branching out and creating a new application using these skills. Um, but I'm not going to teach you exactly how to do it. You're just going to have to figure it out by the information that I've given you so far. I don't want to give you all the code that you need in order to write the program, meaning I'm not going to take, I'm not going to write the Mad Libs program for you and put it on the screen so you can just copy line by line. You're not going to learn anything that way. But if you've watched this video and you've watched the previous video, you'll have all the skills you need to be able to create a Mad Libs program that's really fun. All right, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to cut it here, and I will let you get started on your next project. Thank you very much for paying attention, and I'll see you next time.